Today let's talk about the bolter-wielding Primaris battle line of the Space Marines, just how good is the standard intercessor squad in current Warhammer 40k. Hello and welcome back to Warspets Tactics, where today we're talking about perhaps one of the most iconic units in Warhammer 40k at the moment. Very few miniatures sum up the entire setting in one model in the same way as a Space Marine in power armour wielding a bolt gun, and the Intercessor Squad is very much that, holding the battle line for Space Marine forces across the galaxy. In the video we'll talk briefly about their models, go through their data sheet bit by bit, talk about their intended battlefield role in 40k and how they compare to the many many other squads trying to compete for their same sort of niche in the army. A quick look at all the many options that you can use to support them if you want to, and their rough overall strength in game at the moment. Regardless of their slightly different lore and the way that they were introduced, the Intercessor Squad pretty much are Games Workshop's update of tactical space marines with standard bolt guns, upgraded to bigger bolt rifles and a bigger scale, and were kind of the launch miniature for 8th edition when Games Workshop introduced the Primaris marines for the first time. In battle, much like the tactical marines, they epitomise tactical flexibility, a squad that has many different fighting styles and is able to hold the line in a defensive motion, and then change to going on all-out attack as battlefield situations should change. The word intercessor itself means someone who intercedes, which I thought is interesting enough in itself, that means to intervene on the behalf of another, very much space marines holding up the battle line and supporting their battle brothers. In general for their miniatures, I think they're considered a pretty nice central troops choice for the Space Marine army. They were pretty well received on release as basically true scale Space Marines, not too cluttered and fairly simple armour. Quite a lot of nice space for things like transfers or a bit of freehand if you wanted to on the shoulder pads. The standard kit that they have has the option to customise their bolt rifles with the auto or stalker bolt rifle variants, though mercifully Games Workshop removed the rules difference for them, so minor differences in magazines aren't influencing the way that your models perform, at least what you see is what you get. Probably a good change overall for that reason, I think. As well as that, they come with a grenade launcher in the squad, though the standard box set doesn't come with any sort of fancy power weapons for the sergeant, which is a little bit annoying, as he can take them due to all the upgrade kits that Games Workshop comes out with. It means that they're still a unit that if you want a kind of optimal squad in game, a little bit of kit bashing is pretty helpful to give the sergeant either a power weapon or a power fist. Price from GW, the standard kit is £37.50, €50 Euros or $60. I'd say not too bad at base, given that there's 10 models in the box, the 10-man Space Marine box sets do tend to be a lot better than the 5-man or the 3-man ones, though in reality I'd certainly aim to try and pay less than this for them. Standard intercessors are present in the majority of the combat patrol box sets, and it means that you can either pick some up from one of those, or maybe people reselling extra ones they didn't want on eBay. As always, if you were buying the core kits or the combat patrols though, I'd certainly recommend going through one of Games Workshop's third-party discount retailers, things like Element Games in the UK or Gap Games in Australia, Good discounts off the same box sets, they're all linked in the video description below, and anything bought through them helps support the channel at no extra cost to yourself. Getting onto the rules though, and this is the data sheet for the Intercessor Squad in 10th edition 40k in the Space Marine Codex, it's 85 points per 5 of them, and 5 or 10 models per squad. They do have pretty much the standard Space Marine stat line, toughness 4 with 2 wounds and a 3 plus armour save, so fairly resilient against small arms, but goes down really quite easily to damage 2 weapons en masse, and they are one of the battle line units that gets objective control of 2, so they're extra nice on objectives, and will hold them better than most other units there, which very much does seem to be their intended role. As a battle line unit, they can be taken in multiples, you can have up to 6 squads of them in the army, though in reality, I feel like they're a unit that you really wouldn't want to take that many of. With their damage output, I feel like you get into diminishing returns really quite quickly, and I'd be most tempted by one or two small squads of 5 of them. Even though they very much have the appearance of a solely range squad, when you look at their actual damage output, they do kind of similar damage both at melee and at range. I feel like that's one of their niches, where compared with a bunch of the other Space Marine foot troops, they're kind of alright at both of them. As their Space Marines, they still get 3 attacks at strength 4, AP 0 in combat each, and that's plenty enough to bully things like Termagants or Imperial Guardsmen. Anything with a low toughness and a bad save is going to feel that. And then more excitingly, the Sergeant can and should take an additional combat weapon that they can also have with their Bolt Rifle as well. Either a Power Fist, Thunder Hammer, Power Sword, or a Chain Sword. At least in theory, they're all better against their own targets, but I would probably take the Power Fist the vast majority of the time. To be attacked at Strength 8, AP 2, and Damage 2 is just quite nice and generalist. It's quite nice to have much higher Strength, AP, and Damage than the rest of the squad. They can handle some light troops, and he actually allows them to punch up against some enemy Space Marines or the like. 
and against the majority of targets, I'd probably rather have the hitting on a 3+, plus rather than the devastating wounds that the Thunderhammer brings, as only hits on a 4. It will generally be better against the majority of targets the majority of the time. The Power Sword's alright as well, but without damage to it just doesn't feel quite as threatening. Overall means that they skirmish fairly well with enemy lighter and medium infantry compared with a few of the other similar sized Space Marine squads. For their range damage output, they're equipped with the Trusty Bolt Rifle, 2 shots to 24 inches, strength 4, AP 1 and damage 1, and kind of interestingly having both the assault and the heavy keyword. That kind of feels quite lore appropriate for them. When they go on the attack, they can move really quite fast. When they're standing still, they can do more damage than you might expect normally. After the two, I'd usually argue that the assault one is probably the more important. Being able to move very fast onto objectives is quite nice and still keep up damage output. I'd say that while a plus one to hit is nice, it's only going to be so meaningful on some strength for AP1 small arms fire. One per five models in the squad can take the Astartes grenade launcher. That one's basically always up worth the upgrade, given that you get it for free and you don't give up the bolt rifle for it. It's just underslung. If you've got some intercessor squads armed with just bolt rifles, it might be worth a small conversion just to have ones to count as this. I'd say out of the two profiles, the crack one's the more valuable one. A single shot at strength 9, AP2 and damage G3 has the chance to chip some cheeky wounds off some heavy infantry or maybe even a light vehicle. The frag one certainly doesn't hurt with their primary targets though. Getting the blast keywords means that you could get really quite a lot of attacks against say a 20 man unit if you happen to be shooting one. The only downside for the grenade launcher is that it doesn't get the assault keyword, so if you are advancing around and trying to get the unit from A to B as fast as possible, you wouldn't be able to fire with this unless you were in the Devastator Doctrine in Gladius or something. Finally, the sergeant can opt to exchange his bolt rifle for either plasma pistol or hand flamer. I'd say that neither of these are really worth swapping out the standard bolt rifle for though, and just giving the squad more attacks at their intended range. Finally, we've got the special rule of the Intercessor Squad. Objective Secured is their one, which basically is the Sticky Objectives type special rule. If these guys control a point at the end of your command phase, that objective remains yours until the opponent next controls it. So it does give you the option of potentially moving off the point if it made sense to, and taking the fight to the enemy and destroy the next unit, or gives you extra defense if your squad either fails Battle Shock or is out in the open holding an objective and just gets wiped out. Definitely a handy rule that adds a bit of flexibility for squads taking objectives. Occasionally it won't really matter though if, say, they're on an objective and the opponent just moves up, charges, and kills them. Definitely a nice to have, but probably a rule that's kind of unlikely to actually make a victory point difference in the majority of games, though occasionally it will. Here's a rough idea of what you could expect out of a 5-man intercessor squad with a grenade launcher and a power fist. It is kind of interesting just how close their both range and melee damage is. At range you could expect them to splat around about 5 enemy termagants or imperial guardsmen, but nowhere near as exciting against say enemy space marines where you only really wind up killing around about one of them, and then that drops off even harder against things like terminators or vehicles with bigger and heavier armour. In combat it is kind of similar, around about the same sort of damage output against hordes, but going up a bit against the space marine targets with that power fist. It's a quite a good profile for them with that strength 8 and damage 2. They're still not really going to do anything more than chip damage against terminators or vehicles though, usually around about 1 or 2 wounds. Overall I'd say that their range damage output just in general probably isn't the best reason to bring them. They're only really going to be effective against enemy hordes and if they don't really have any of those to shoot at then just gunning down one enemy space marine on average a turn just isn't going to be enough to make their damage output justified. I feel like they get to the point of being kind of okay to good if you happen to be able to target either space marines or lighter troops and get a full turn where you can both shoot then charge them you get into the point where they're actually kind of okay on the counter attack like that. They're perhaps in an interesting place where they've got significantly better damage output than most of the normal 5-man troop type squads that Space Marines can take, but they don't have quite good enough general purpose damage to really rival the actual damage dealers that Space Marines might want to take, things like aggressors, terminators or hellblasters, never mind the vehicles. If you are competing against the other objective holding squads though, they will generally do a bit more damage with them if you can get both range and melee damage, say for example reavers with bolt carbines, or infiltrators will only do around about one wound against space marines at range and two wounds in melee. The grenade launcher and power fist definitely help a bit on that front. Overall, for actually what they do well as a unit relative to other space marines, they're quite good on the counter attack against lighter or medium infantry. And their other primary selling point is being good on objectives, high objective control plus their special rule which is genuinely kind of handy. Beyond that, I wouldn't say that they're standout enough to really take for their durability alone. 17 points for marine body definitely isn't bad, but there's plenty of things that kill that very very efficiently in 10th edition. 
And otherwise, I wouldn't really say that they're standout enough to really be a star choice for things like characters, transports or stratagems, as your basic foot troops with okay but not standout damage output. Generally, those things are all going to be used better on more elite space marines with scarier threats. I'm not saying that you can't use them on intercessors and do well, but just in general, if you are making big investments in a list, it often makes sense to put those big investments on your most valuable squads that deal loads of damage. For that reason, when I have seen them in competitive lists, they tend to be in fairly small numbers in small units of five, going towards objectives and skirmishing with enemy troops. Even within that role though, there's just a ridiculous amount of competition within the Space Marine Codex, lots and lots of guys with bolters or other similar weapons that will deal more damage to lighter infantry than heavies. Tactical Marines are usually going to be compared to them, they're 160 points, so a tiny bit cheaper in points, plus you get the heavy weapons like a hidden last cannon or meltagon or plasma, though on the downside they have significantly worse melee, worse AP0 bolters without the keywords, they lack the special rule, and you have to buy 10 in a single unit, even if you can combat squad them. And despite the special weapons being fun, I feel that like that probably doesn't outweigh the advantages that the intercessors bring. Assault intercessors, I think, are fairly well balanced with them. They're only 80 points for objective control to bodies. A fair bit better in melee, particularly with their special rule, though giving up ranged threat, I feel, makes them just a little bit less flexible overall. I think these and the regular intercessors are really quite well balanced. The heavy intercessors are 105 points, they've got strength 5 longer range bolters, plus a heavy bolter as well, though given costing an extra 20 points it doesn't actually mean that their damage output is necessarily overall better. What they are unquestionably better at though is being tough, getting 18 wounds of toughness 6 gravis armour for 105 points is really good, but again they definitely suffer from their own downsides as well. Ideally you want that big tough armour on the front line, but then they're way worse in melee as they don't get a power fist on their sergeant. Plus there's just the general idea that you don't usually want to hold an objective with a 105 point unit if say an 85 point unit might have done. If they're low priority units that the opponent didn't really want to target anyway then you might just have been better putting those points towards something else more aggressive. Casting the net a little bit wider I still consider all of these basically filling the same sort of role for the units each of them adding their own utility. Incursors are the same price and between their special rules for both their range and melee attacks are kind of somewhat balanced side grades. With Ignore Cover and a Haywire Mine, they trade out objective rules for their marker target rule plus scout. Infiltrators can have the option of setting up in the midfield, and they're paying a premium for their aura of deep strike denial, but lose out on damage and objective control. Infernus Marines are short-ranged and just go all in on bullying lighter infantry. Loads of strength 5 flame attacks, has better damage output at close than the Intercessor squad, plus they can also threaten some actually worthwhile overwatch. They do have the downside of no melee weapon and worse objective control as well though. And Stone Guard veterans pay a 15 point premium for vastly better bolters, 3 shots at 12 inches, plus devastating wounds and a heavy bolter, and again trade out on the objective control and just being worse defence overall due to costing more for the same defensive stat line. I think you perhaps get the point by now, there's lots of things that can do the same sort of battlefield role as the intercessors. Loads of minor positives and negatives over them, depending on what flavour of infantry killing you fancy, and whether or not you like any of these special rules. I'll probably also add things like scouts, eliminators, jump intercessors and reavers to the list as well. I feel like space marine armies will generally be as an overall positive for including some units on this list, but not going too heavy on them, because otherwise you're going to lack for damage output. Beyond all the many competitors though, let's just talk through some of the support options for the intercessor squads themselves. Oath of Moment, as ever, will help out if you're trying to focus down one target. Probably a little bit less essential for these guys compared with your primary damage dealers, but doesn't hurt if they can chip in. And perhaps for more generic stratagems, Armour of Contempt is usually pretty handy for squads surviving on objectives. If it is going to give them the chance of surviving to hold a point, then it could well be worth it, even if the objective damage saved isn't enormous. For sort of middling damage squads like this, I feel like grenades could help out in a pinch as well. If they're fighting with an isolated enemy unit on an objective, an extra three mortal wounds or so might just be enough to tip the balance between them slaying the enemy unit or getting killed in return. Between that and a power fist, you at least have a chance of taking down a fair few enemy elites. In general though, as with other slightly smaller squads, I wouldn't go out of my way to spend command points on them, but definitely doesn't hurt in the right situation. For character support, they've got perhaps some of the best options of just about any of the primaris units given that they're Tacticus keyword models and pretty much considered the core of the army. As mentioned earlier though, I feel like it's kind of rare that they're going to be the best choice for you to actually put characters into. If you've got some scary combat characters in Warhammer 40k, then usually they're probably not going to be your first choice versus an actual more dedicated melee squad. 
maybe Blade Guard veterans or even just Assault Intercessors for characters that are maybe a little bit more ranged or more supporting in nature. In general, the first choice of the Tacticus ones are likely to be slightly more dangerous ranged units, maybe things like Stern Guard veterans with their devastating wounds or Hellblasters if they have the option to join those. For that reason, I'd usually not bother unless you're wanting the squad to guard a character for some reason, maybe arresting you for a tech marine if you didn't just want to rely on his lone operative, or perhaps moving alongside a character that's buffing other units somehow. Even though I feel it's most of the time probably not going to be optimal, I still feel like it's probably not the absolute end of the world, and you could definitely get away with it in a bit more of a casual environment and it'd probably be quite effective. If so, I'd probably build out the squad to a 10-man unit, and then perhaps some of my top choices for leading the unit might be a librarian for the 4 plus and vulnerable save. I could directly help them just be more survivable on objectives, which is what they want to do. A Primaris Lieutenant seems pretty fine for them as well. They've got a lot of low strength bolter hits, so lethal hits on that helps them out enormously against tougher targets. The 4 back shoot and charge thing works really quite well with them too. And out of the Ultramarines, I feel like Chief Librarian Targaryas could be an interesting one. I think he's just an all-around fairly standout character that can't lead Hellblasters, meaning that probably either Stone Guard or regular Intercessors are the best place to put him. He could genuinely make for a fairly threatening Intercessor unit between some durability boosts, free Overwatch, and some powerful psychic shooting and extra melee. Loads of other options though, and plenty of reasonable enhancements that could be put in the unit if you wanted. For transports, probably like characters, the most boring answer is probably that most of the time they're kind of fine not to have them. It definitely could be one way to deliver them quickly onto midfield objectives if you wanted, but I'd say compared with at least a few of the other Primaris units, they're kind of happy with advancing. They can advance and shoot, so that means they'll be going at least at a fair rate anyway, and not compromising on their damage output too much. Again, transports might be a bit better served for more valuable units, things like Black Templar Sword Brethren, or Blade Guard, or Hellblasters or something. But with impulses as cheap as they are at the moment at just 80 points, I feel like it's really not the worst idea to have a five-man squad of intercessors in one of those. That's only 165 points and can deliver some high objective control models to the centre of the board right from turn one plus chip in with small arms and a supporting missile launcher. You could also do transport shenanigans with it, where you just keep them embarked for a turn, and then finish up near a terrain piece, so if the opponent does gun down the Impulsor, then the Intercessors just get out somewhere nice and safe, ready to counter-attack the next turn. Otherwise, there's plenty of other transport options. I guess you could use something like a Repulsor or an Executioner. Might not be the worst if, say, you had a Repulsor Executioner and you had a spare transport slot, though again, I think a lot of people will be more tempted by other units for that role. Full Detachments, being some of the most core and iconic Space Marine units around, they've got a role in pretty much all of them. The only one from the Core Codex that doesn't really have much value for them is the First Company Task Force, just due to no real support as all the stratagems are aimed at veterans. Perhaps one of the more interesting ones might be the Anvil Siege Force, that one gives you a plus one to wound with heavy weapons if stationary, so the bolters could definitely punch with a lot more oomph there. I would still say that it probably doesn't actually break them into being particularly great all round damage even if they're static but definitely gives them a lot more bite and helps even them out against other choices. There's also a sustained hit stratagem and four back and shoot strats, both of which are handy. For the Firestorm Assault Force, strength 5 shots within 12 inches is quite fun, and I guess you get the assault keyword on the grenade launcher which is handy. They definitely could use transports and could be an option for jumping in and out of impulses as mentioned. The Vanguard Spearhead suits them fairly nicely as ranged infantry. The minus 1 to hit and cover is pretty handy if they're surviving on an objective at range, and when they die, they might well just be able to objective secure it anyway. Plenty of the stratagems could work well, returning to reserves, running away from charges, or striking from the shadows for plus one to hit and extra AP. For the Gladius Task Force, they're usually going to be kind of fine in the Devastator Doctrine as they already have Assault, though it could help the Grenade Launcher. Both the Tactical and perhaps even the Assault Doctrine are quite nice though. Advance and Charge is quite nice if you can fire your guns first anyway. It could make some interesting use of squad tactics as well if the opponent moves up to try and get line of sight on them. You could maybe shy away from them or jump behind cover. The Storm Lance brings Advance and Charge all game long. That is quite handy for shooting as mentioned. And they've got a nice reactive 1 CP to reactive move 6 inches to counter charges and things. And the Iron Storm Spearhead's generally all about the tanks. Not too bad to have a few bodies with higher objective control though, given that most Space Marine vehicles don't do particularly well for that. And the single re-rolls will be quite nice on the grenade launcher or the power fist. Overall though, for most of these I wouldn't say that they're desperately stand out in any one of them. I feel like they're just kind of fine wherever they're taken. Not exactly the sort of unit that you build your entire army around. 
Just for a bit of interest, I thought it would be fun to see what a 10-man squad could do when fairly maximally supported in the Anvil Siege Force. Probably kind of overkill to put these kind of buffs just on intercessors, and maybe heavy intercessors might be better, but still fun to see what the basic bolt rifle space marines can do when they're at their finest. Just for this one, we've got a unit that's remaining stationary with a whole bunch of bolt rifles and some grenade launchers. In the Anvil Siege Force, the bolt rifles will both have plus one to hit from heavy and also plus one to wound, and also lethal hits from the lieutenant. And then if they're static, you can pay one command point for sustained hits and getting critical hits on a 5+, plus, which affects the lethal hits for the lieutenant as well. Finally, stack all that with Oath of Moment to get as many 5+, plus rolls as you possibly can, and you do get a squad that's at least fairly threatening at range. On average damage output from that, you get around about 26 termagants, around 7 to 8 space marines, and around about 9 wounds to enemy terminators or save 3 plus vehicles. Perhaps not too bad for a unit that costs 235 points and is hopefully standing on an objective to give it loads of objective control. Kind of fun to see bolters taking some significant chunks out of tanks and vehicles and things. Though in reality this is going very heavy with buffs and investment on the unit, probably a bit more so than is really justified given that you could do this with a Hellblaster squad for example. Finally for a quick look through the more divergent chapters, Blood Angels does add significantly more threats to their melee power with plus 1 strength and plus 1 attack if you're using their Sons of Sanguinius detachment. That does make them into a fairly savage counter charge unit to be fair, maybe not the worst to have a little bit of fire support and still hit easily hard enough to bully lighter units. You do also have the option of Death Company Intercessors as one alternative, but I feel like they're maybe a little bit tricky given their objective control drops to zero if there's not a chaplain nearby. For Black Templars, I feel like they're not going to get a look in all that often compared with the very cheap Crusader squads, and in general if you want further supporting units it might be better for things that infiltrate or have other interesting supporting abilities. If you do field them there though, they're probably not all that much worse, and they do get the option of feel no pain from their detachment perhaps. Death Watch, again, I feel like they're going to struggle to compete against all the flavours of kill teams they can take, though their various turns of damage buffs from the mission tactics are by no means a bad thing, at least their bolters can use the special issue ammo stratagems if it ever makes sense. 2 plus anti-infantry is quite nice when you were hitting with standard bolt rifles before. Dark Angels will be a little bit more reliable on objectives for failing Battleshock when it matters, and they've got stratagems to fall back and shoot or return fire when they lose a casualty. And Space Wolves again have a few of their own competitors, things like Blood Claws and Grey Hunters in their own battle lines. I feel like just in general they might prefer melee units a little bit more, perhaps a bit more likely to take Assault Intercessors. In any case, summing up for the Intercessors at 85 points, I'd rate them as usable, but definitely best in small numbers. Maybe something like 1 or 2 units in a 2000 point army list. Give them a grenade launcher and a power fist to skirmish and bully enemy lighter infantry trying to take the midfield objectives. Ideally, I think you'd want to move towards an objective that's maybe a little bit safer for you, and the enemy isn't just going to overpower with some great big enormous threat. If they can activate objective secures on it, then so much the better. I can either try to just completely hide from enemy firepower, or chip in with a little bit of bolter fire to whistle down troops at a range while they hold it. You definitely could play them a bit differently depending on the army that you're facing though. Against some armies, it might be genuinely quite nice to have small counter charge units in there. Or sometimes it might be better to designate them to hold the home field objective and allow something else to go elsewhere. Again, I do feel that they're by no means mandatory and are probably not a top tier Space Marine unit, though one of the more interesting ones. They do have just a ridiculous amount of competition for small Space Marine squads to skirmish and take objectives in different ways. And some of the others do have some seriously good draws to them, whether it's the big deep strike denial bubbles of the infiltrators, providing buffs to your gun line like the incursors can or the little bit of extra investment that can bring you a fair bit of extra damage or defence, like say with either Stern Guard or Heavy Intercessors. Overall, as a class, I probably wouldn't take too many of those type of marine units, have a few of them mixed in with the rest of your army, but not draw too much of a cost away from all of your heavy hitters to try and beat down the majority of the enemy's force. I'd say it's nice to see that they're somewhat playable though, definitely a bit better than a lot of the time that standard bolter marines have been represented in 40k's history. They do have a bit of a tendency to gravitate towards the bottom of the pile, just because lots of other space marines have various different fancy bits of kits that do things that they do a bit better. Let me know your thoughts on the standard space marine battle line though, look forward to hearing all your ideas down in the comments below. How have the standard intercessor squads been performing for you in game recently? If you've enjoyed the video, then feel free to subscribe to Allspets Tactics, or I'll certainly keep the regular 40k videos coming. I do tend to post new things just about every day, and we'll definitely have more for the Space Marines over the next few days and weeks.
Finally, if you have been enjoying all the videos on the channel, I would just like to mention that Allspets Tactics does have a Patreon page as well, and you can find that linked in the video description if you'd like to help support and keep these videos coming. Channel patrons do get a fair few advantages, seeing certain videos early, regular votes to see what sort of things happen next on the channel, and automatic entry into the regular prize giveaways with a chance to win some big model kits each month. If any of that sounds good to you, or you'd just like to help support, the link is down in the video description. In any case, a massive thank you for listening, and I'll hope to see you guys next time.